Alright guys, we are back here in some NBA 2K19 My Team, and I feel like I've played NBA 2K19 My Team pretty much every single day since it launched back in September, so I would consider myself a bit of a My Team expert. So the video we have today is 5 things that can make NBA 2K20 My Team a much better game. Now with that said, this list does not contain things about the actual gameplay of my team, such as the shot contest or the health defense. This is my team specific, as those problems are prevalent throughout all of 2K game modes. So this is my wish list for NBA 2K20 my team, 5 things that can make NBA 2K20 my team much better than 2K19 my team. Number 1 on this list is of course the auction house. Anyone that has played my team in the last couple of months knows how bad the auction house has been at times. Say we look at Galaxy Opals for 10,000 or less. 10,000 or less. We see Tony Parker for 9,000. Now we check for 9,000 or under. Okay we do see a Tony Parker, but see how there's a bunch for 8950? We now check 8950 and they all magically disappear. This is unacceptable. This can't happen. At times, cards have been completely missing from the auction house, and even worse at times, you haven't been able to bid on auctions or redeem your MT. So that also does tie into servers, which also do tie into this. Both servers and auction house need to be working 24-7 every single day of 2K20 My Team, and anything less than that is just unacceptable for a million, multi-million dollar company. Number two on my list is contracts. Unlike some people, I don't think contracts need to be completely removed from the game, but I do think cards that are pink diamond and above should come automatically with unlimited contracts, and I do think all cards should at a baseline come with at least 10 contracts to start. I think this would go a long way towards helping people out and getting contracts. I also think contracts should simply just be much cheaper. I don't mind contracts, it makes sense. In real life you gotta pay your players to play. It should just be a whole lot cheaper. As the beginning of the game, trying to start out as a player, it can be really difficult to just buy contracts to play domination games, or play unlimited, or even to play triple threat, it can be a real pain. So I don't think contracts should be completely removed, I think they should just be much easier to acquire, and much cheaper to buy. <sighs> Number 3 on my list is about packs. I personally think that buying a pack with MT should be cheaper than buying a pack with VC. I think you should get rewarded for playing the game and earning my team points, instead of VC, which can be used throughout all of 2K. So imagine if these packs were 10,000 VC and 9,000 MT. I think that would be much more fair. And also, and also, this will never happen, but I think there should be some semblance of pack odds on there, even if you just want to put the top players or 1 out of 100 or 1 out of 50. And the reason this will never happen is that 2K wants to make money. And if you look and see the rare Galaxy Opal you want to get is in 1 out of 100 packs, and you were going to open 20 packs, you're probably going to say, well, I'm probably not going to get this card. And they, that may discourage you from buying VC and opening packs, so 2K loses money. Number 4 on my list is about positions. I know that there are versatile players in the NBA, such as we have here LeBron James and Giannis. But, as you can see, I have Shaq at the 1 and Yao at the 2 which is absolutely ridiculous and can never happen. So what I propose is certain players can play certain positions. LeBron James can say play the 1 through 5, Paul George the 2 through 4, Shaq 4, 5, and Yao Ming probably just the 5. If you play a player out of those certain positions, they get a massive drop to speed, speed with ball, and ball control, making them completely useless at those positions. So if you want to play them for just a big body, go ahead, but it's going to be extremely ineffective. And I think this is a simple fact, simple fix to the position problem. Number five on this list is to help players who actually played the game a lot. Now, I played literally thousands of triple threat online games. My point is, after winning a certain amount of triple threat games, after reaching certain thresholds, you should get rewarded for it. Even if it's just a player for every 500 wins, capping out at like 2,000 wins, you should get some sort of cumulative reward. Say if you win a thousand games, all the MT in your boards doubles, or something like that, just to reward you for grinding the game and playing it a lot, instead of this just the same monotonous triple threat. And also there should be consistent players on the boards and packs at all times, instead of just the juice days. Also, My Team Unlimited, the rewards for My Team Unlimited, they suck. If you have the player of the month, and you're trying to just simply make MT, triple threat is so much better than unlimited. The rewards for unlimited should almost be doubled 
because I know that a lot of people, My Team Unlimited is by far their favorite part of the game. And the problem is, the lower tier rewards, if you're not that good at Unlimited, and say you only get 3 wins, right now you get 500 MT for playing 6 games. You get 500 MT. This ends up pushing a lot of the people that aren't that great at the game, and a lot of beginners and decent people, which is moderately good teams, they go to triple threat because they're afraid to play unlimited, because only really good players play unlimited, making every unlimited game super competitive, super sweaty game, which isn't a healthy environment for anyone. Going further on, making 2K My Team more play to win instead of pay to win these moments challenges. Moment challenges are really cool, and the idea of them is awesome. The problem is, right now there's none of them, and for large stretches of the year, there isn't any moments challenges. It wouldn't be that hard for them to just update and make sure there's at least one or two in here at all times. They don't have to be for that much MT or tokens, just 5,000 MT or 10 tokens, but just have something here. And weekly challenges, I love that we have challenges. Weekly challenges are awesome, and actually, I don't like talking good about 18, but 18's token system, where every weekly challenges you completed gave you a token, and those tokens added up and gave you players, was great, and I love that. That was my favorite part of my team, probably. 2k18 my team, probably. But the problem is with these is, look at this, you get three tokens for playing five games. And a couple of them, I believe, are full games. You could get three tokens so much faster playing Triple Threat. It's just, it's not even close, and there's no reason you would ever want to play these weekly challenges because there's no cumulative reward for beating all of them. Now, also the same thing kind of applies with schedule challenges, but schedule challenges are even worse because there's 15 games here, and a lot of them are full games as well. The only people that ever did these schedule challenges were people that needed free agent cards to get Giannis early. They promised there would be great rewards for uh, these schedule challenges, and I think what they simply should do is, the rewards don't need to be that big, there just needs to be way less games for these schedule challenges. So those are my 5 big things on my NBA 2K20 My Team wishlist. Let me know what kind of things are on your wishlist and what you thought about my suggestions. With that said, that's going to be the video for today. As always, please make sure to like, subscribe, comment down below what you thought of this video, and what other videos you would like to see. Show.